Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel So Happy. Today we are going to be doing something a little bit different and I'm going to be sharing with you all my favourite fashion and costume books. I said a few weeks ago on my Instagram if anyone would be interested in seeing this and quite a few people responded saying yes, so here we go. Just to give you an idea about what this video is about, I will not be featuring um, any sewing books. All these books are purely uh, fashion and costume based and when I mean costume I mean film costume and theatre costume, so no historic costume. I would love to do, um, well feature some historic costume books in this but I feel like they're a little <laughs> heavy. I personally love looking at surly paintings of people in like hose and corsets and farthingales and all, all that malarque, but I don't think that everybody will enjoy this. So I've really edited this list down to some really, really beautiful, what I like to call coffee table books. So books that even if you're not into fashion and costume that someone could really appreciate and they're just really, really beautiful publications. All these books is, um, range from um, about 70 pounds to probably about five pounds. So there's something for everybody. All the prices I will be mentioning are the full publishing price. So this is the price that's featured on the book. However, you may be able to find it somewhere else. I will list all the books I could possibly can in the little description box down below. As some of you may know, um, a few weeks ago I went to Paris and I went to see the Christmas into your um, collection and they have a book that was featured that collection. I will not be talking about this book today simply because it is also featured in another video and I would rather show you an extra book today in this video than that one. So again, link down below is the, all the information about that beautiful, beautiful Dior book, which I highly, highly recommend. It is stunning. For those of you wondering, I am wearing my jumpsuit today. I will put the pattern here because I can't remember off the top of my head, but I really love it and I thought it's very appropriate for today's video and you will see why. And I'm also wearing, I'll come closer, my little Dorothy um, shoes. This is the book from the exhibit of the Golden Age of Couture that was held at the v &A Museum in 2007. I cannot believe it's been a decade since I actually went to see this. This is not the um, original cover. I got this book four years ago. The original cover is here. I'll put a picture. And it is actually a really beautiful um, illustration by Downton Downton? David Downton. I was thinking Downton Abbey. No, David Downton, who is an incredible fashion illustrator. He has a wonderful Instagram as well, so you should go check that out. And I actually bought that poster when I went to see that exhibit when I was 16, because I didn't have enough money for the book. We went on a school trip and it was the most beautiful exhibit. It was, oh, I can't even put it into words. It was stunning. And I'd never been to the V&A, so that was like, I was spoiled straight away. So this is a really beautiful book. It features um, couture designers and the movement of what couture was from the era of 1947 to 1957. So it's just 10 years. It is edited by Claire Wilcox, but it's just a really beautiful book. And on the back, I mean, <laughs> we all know this. This is the, um, the new look that this is what Dior became known for at the very, very beginning. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful book. I mean, Audrey Hepburn, there she is. I'm not gonna show you too much inside the book, um, simply because otherwise we'll be here all day. But this just gives you an idea about what the book contains. It's just, oh, little doll. <laughs> It's just absolutely stunning. This features gowns um, by many different designers of this era, worn by everyone from the Queen of England to Audrey Hepburn. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just a beautiful book with beautiful detailing. So if you love couture, this is the book for you. It is absolutely stunning. I mean, look at the cover. Yes, it's lovely. And it's also beautifully written. So yeah, highly recommend. I'm just going to finish. Oh my goodness. This. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's just take a minute to look at that. It's, it, yeah, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Like I said, this is a really beautiful coffee table book. It also looks absolutely stunning. This is the um, paperback version as the hardback version is ridiculously heavy. So if you can get the paperback version, I recommend it. This retails at $24.99, but I know you probably can find it cheaper on Amazon or somewhere like that. Okay, the next book is called Fashion. <laughs> Just Fashion, the ultimate book of costume and style. Now we have this book. Um, I picked this one up in the works for, I think it was like seven pounds. It was like, Crazy, crazy sale, but it retails, oh no, this is so heavy, sorry. It retails at um, 30 pounds, and on the back it says, every generation reinvents fashion. Okay. <laughs> so basically, I would recommend this book for um, maybe a younger um, audience, if you're like just starting your GCSEs, or if you just want to kind of learn a little bit of snippets around every era of fashion and costume. Um, it just gives you like a small insight about what was happening at that time, what the sort of colours were, what people were wearing, why they were wearing it. I mean, here's a, this is a, this is actually opened at a page which I love. This is um, romant Romantic Nostalgia, 1930 to 1944, and it just gives you a slight breakdown of who was who, what was what, 
what you wore, why you wore it, sort of like a mini, kind of, it's basically a timeline. I always say this book is like, oh, again, <laughs> the new look deal. Um, it just gives you a sort of breakdown about why we wore what we wore, um, outer layers, undergarments, um, everything like that, sort of prints, fashion. I mean, this is all quite um, sort of the new stuff. Oh, they have a whole section of Bieber. I didn't realise that. Oh, I have to reread this. Um, but yeah, they go all the way back to, for example, this is a section about frivolity in court court paintings, um, why you wore what you wore. Um, yeah, this is this is a great page. So if you are um, wanting to study costume or fashion and you just want to kind of get a rough idea about, you know, how times move and what things look like, I think this is a really beautiful book. It's not the best cover. I mean, it is fuzzy, but I think this is just a reprint. But I remember the one we had, there was um, a series of two books that came together in a big folder. And that's what we used at um, GCC Textiles. And it was really, really lovely. It's a nice book just to flip through and get an idea about what's what and what era and see if there's something you might like to look into. Now, the next book I'm going to be talking about is actually an exhibit that was uh, we were quite heavily involved in, in terms of like <laughs> lectures. So this is an exhibit that was put on in London in my final year at university. And it is the um, Hollywood costume. This is why. <laughs> The Hollywood uh, Costume Show. Now this is a show, um, an exhibit, uh, put on by Deborah, Deborah Noodleman Landis, who is actually a costume designer herself. I'm not the biggest fan of her um, work personally, but as a curator and a, like a, basically a documenter of costume and her knowledge base, she is amazing. She know, really, really knows her stuff. And this is a, um, something that she's becoming renowned for. And she actually put this exhibit on along with a huge team of people in um, the V&A. It started in the V&A. And I really hate the title of the show. I'm just gonna put it out there. It's called Hollywood Costume. And she actually mentioned this herself. Someone in the audience, when we went to a lecture, we went to a series of lectures held by her and other costume designers, which we were invited to, seeing as we were studying costume, which is an amazing insight. So we actually got to meet some pretty amazing designers who I've been lusting over for years and years. And someone actually asked, why did you call it Hollywood Costume? <laughs> because the majority of these costumes in here are British and from you know other countries. And she says simply because it, it it translates well to a wide range of people and it will sell more tickets, which I completely understand because, you know, the v &A needs to make money and I want it to make money because it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, museum. But this exhibit actually was uh, basically every iconic uh, Hollywood costume you could think of. So they had things from Harry Potter, they had um, the red dress from Gone with the Wind you'll know the dress I mean. They had the Dorothy shoes, the Dorothy dress, the atonement dress, everything. It was beautiful. It was kind of like, <laughs> this is the best way to put it, the Madame Two Swords of costume. Like everyone that's kind of, you know, people know of in like pop culture, the costumes are there. It was an incredible exhibit. I went to it five times. <laughs> which is nuts, but I had um, a v &A membership so you can go as many times as you want. And the reason I had to go five times is because it was so packed with people, which was such a shame. They really sold way too many tickets that that was, you know, that people can actually get into. So it kind of did spoil the, the atmosphere, but I actually took my mum, we could only go for one day and I kept apologizing. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Cause you literally had to wait your turn um, to get to see things, which I totally get. I'm a very patient person. We are British, we believe in queuing, um, but I've been to other exhibits of V&A before and the health and safety side of it, you shouldn't let that many people in. And I know that sounds really negative, but this is my channel and you know, this is my, my opinion. But other than that, it was an incredible exhibit and anyone who got to go will probably completely agree with me. It was amazing and it gave you a real insight into how costumes produced, what costumes do, why they're vital to the actor, to the, the viewer, and there were some really beautiful pieces there, and I saw a lot of people getting really slightly emotional seeing these garments that they've known for years and years and years through through your television screen, seeing in the life. It's kind of like meeting, sounds really sweet, like your sort of hero, you kind of get a bit like, oh my god. So yeah, but this is a, a wonderful, wonderful book. I'm just trying to find, I mean, this page is great, but the next book I'm going to show you kind of links to that as well, but actually, you know what I'm going to show you? These are the costume sketches <laughs> um, for Quella de Vil in the film, which, oh, I, I, I love her. I think, I think she's amazing. Such a eccentric character. But here's some pages just to give you an idea. Some of you will know this film, but here's the design, here's the, here's the photo. But yeah, it just sort of tells you about um, the exhibit, how it came together, the pieces, um, everything like that. Yeah, it's just, it's a lovely book. It's a great book. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's lovely. It's really, really nice. I like it. I mean, the red shoes, I'm just saying. But what I also liked about this exhibit is it also featured a lot of modern costumes. So they had a few bits about Bond and he's particularly featured in this, which is kind of nice because I feel like sometimes uh, costume shows or exhibits costume books, they get a bit um, 
I've, oh my oh my goodness I just remembered the avatar section oh, so they had a lot of the avatar costumes and you're probably thinking at home but avatar CGI uh, it is CGI but every single piece of costume jewelry everything was actually made and then um, filmed and scanned into uh, the computer and then they animated it so everything you see in avatar whether it's beadwork um, capes everything was actually made by hand which is pretty special and it's kind of going hand in hand with how the costume industry is changing and technology so yeah this this exhibit was pretty special like it kind of covered everything um, and for those of you who are trying to think of a film that Deborah did that you will know about she did um, all of the Indiana Jones movies I can't remember which one but yeah she designed the costumes of that and now she's um, really turning her um, page into creating so this is a great book for anyone who wants to get a real grasp about a real industry insight this is for you and it's also got a great book cover so this is actually one of my favorite costume books of all time I absolutely love this book this was actually again written and put together by Deborah, Deborah Noodleman Landis all the names um, who wrote the previous book I just showed you and this is actually a fantastic book she's done such a good job in this one I really really did enjoy it um, it features um, it's basically what it says on the cover it's the Hollywood sketchbook and it features the most beautiful drawings and designs by all the top um, costume designers of today and past I mean oh my god yeah and it has like a bio on every designer which I like sometimes people feature these costumes and they don't talk about um the designer they don't even mention their name on certain like I'm not gonna name Instagram accounts but on certain Instagram accounts they show all these costumes and they don't mention who designed them because not that the designer needs praise all the time I'm not saying that at all but it's nice to see who did it so you can link all their other projects and how they did it I think it's really interesting so I'm not gonna be holding this up much because it's so heavy as you can see it's pretty bricky um it doesn't say what it retail price it is from memory it was very expensive it says it's 75 dollars it, it is a very expensive book but I'm sure you can find it cheaper all of these books I've had for years and years and years and years so they are collector's items I don't buy these like every week so that would be a little nuts so what I really love about this book is that it shows so many different styles and so many different designers throughout 60 50 60 years um, and how people's styles have changed so it goes from like the really classic Hollywood um, costume design to like these really cool digital ones so it does feature um, costume design drawings from Harry Potter um, 100 more Dalmatians the great films um, Edith Head every, everything like that it's all in there um, it's an incredible incredible oh sorry this it literally all these books are opening on the right pages for me today I mean just can we just take that in a second isn't that the most beautiful beautiful drawing you've ever seen oh it's gorgeous i mean here's i mean here's one of tilda swindon for example and it's all like digital and funky yes i mean anthony powell is one of my favorite designers of all time this is his um cruella sketches so you can just get a really like, good idea about what's in this book so it has all these stunning beautiful drawings I wish I could find the Harry Potter one but if I if I looked through every single page for you it would take a really long time but it just gives you a rough idea about what's in this book the sort of style it has it's really stunning so even if you're oh I shared this on my Instagram and it's got fabric samples here it's just a stunning stunning book it's very very heavy and I just love looking at it and also how people present character it's a very interesting um process oh my god is that Cecil Beaton I think it is Cecil Beaton, I could be wrong. Oh no, it is Cecil Beaton. Oh, I love this story. This is um, Audrey Hepburn here in My Fair Lady. And for those of you who don't know, um, Cecil Beaton designed um, the costumes of My Fair Lady. Cecil Beaton was this incredible um, artist, photographer. He took pictures of the Queen, Princess Margaret. He designed ballets and oh, he was just amazing. And I, I love this, I love this. So this is, this is really exciting, I'm getting excited again. I'm gonna turn this camera off and look at the book. <laughs> My goodness. <gasps> This is so good. I've just found costumes on Hook. Oh, okay, put this away, put this away. Put it away, but yeah, I love this book. Continuing on from um, the greats and costume designers, um, for those of you who are sort of new to um, costume design or film, if you like film costumes, the go-to for old Hollywood is Edith Head. This, this is Edith Head. And for those of you Edith Head who don't know, Edith Head is a huge, multi Oscar winning costume designer from the great golden age. Um, she designed costumes for Grace Kelly, Audrey Hepburn. She did all the big, 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 big Hollywood iconic films that you know today and love. And she is pretty amazing. Um, there's some really interesting um, 
<laughs> a backstory to this designer, there's a lot of debate around her because she also collaborated with Xin Hongxi, um, if I'm pronouncing that right, a lot of the time, and people were like, oh, he kind of deserves an Oscar too. So it's a really interesting um, Hollywood gossip for you there. Um, but I think she's an incredible, incredible artist. Um, and for those of you who've watched The Incredibles, they based the costume designer for the superheroes on Edna Mode. So her name was... Um, I can't remember her. Oh yeah, Edna Mode, I just said it. Her name was Edna Mode. They based her on Audrey, on um, Edith Head, sorry. And that literally, I, I died. When we went to cinema, I was like, that's Edith Head. And my family like, who's Edith Head? I'm like, who's Edith Head? You raised me. Um, but yeah, I fell in love with Edith Head when I was about 13 years old and I got the big box set of Audrey Hepburn films, complete Audrey Hepburn films, when I was 14 and I just absolutely fell in love with her. She's amazing. Oh yeah, oh my goodness. Here's a section on Roman Holiday. I think this is Audrey Hepburn's first film. And there's one of her sketches, um, or one of her pupil sketches. Um, but yeah, yeah, she's just she's just a very interesting woman. Um, and oh, she also designed costumes for Marilyn Monroe. And yeah, she's just it's just a really interesting book. It's a really really beautifully put together book about her process and, and like what it was like working with her and her designs and and things like that. So yeah, it's it's um, really interesting. And she also designed costumes for Alfred Hitchcock. So that just gives you an idea about how big she was in the day. So if you discover who Edith Head, who Edith Head is, you'll discover the amount of work she did. And she really was a, like a pinnacle designer of the time. And today she still is very well renowned and an incredible, incredible woman. And a lot of people, there's a lot of rumors. I don't know whether this is true or not. Um, it could just be one of those really funny Hollywood facts, but she's very well known for her round dark glasses. And people just thought this was sort of like um, a fashion, statement but it's been um said it might not be true but this is what i've been told that she wore these dark round glasses and she was designing to be able to see how fabric looked when it was black and white so back in those days when she had foot career really started out um all films were filmed in black and white so color did not exist but then again certain fabrics look different when they're filmed in black and white so she had to have an idea about how they were going to look so that's why she wore the big glasses i could be wrong this could just be a rumor but i just think that's a really nice story so yeah god these books are so heavy so we're down to our last book now guys this is um, a complete ego project for me. Uh, this is my favourite book, um, simply to my taste. Um, and for those of you, you might not, not many people know about the Ballet Rouge. Uh, the Ballet Rouge was um, a Russian ballet company. Um, and oh, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. <laughs> which is really silly, it's a ballet company that no, technically, technically no longer exists. Um, and everyone's dead, which is really sad. This was, again, another costume exhibit uh, featured the, the v &A call about the Ballet Rouge. And it was called Daglev. Now, Daglev, I could be pronouncing this wrong, so I'm very, very sorry to any Russian viewers out there. Um, he basically owned the Ballet Rouge, and the Ballet Rouge was this incredible ballet company, and it nurtured and created some of the most incredible, incredible pieces of modern ballet. It's, it's amazing. So if any of you, most of you would have heard music featured and curated for this ballet company. So if any of you have watched Fantasia, you know the T-Rex dinosaur scene, that that music is called The Rite of Spring. That was a Ballet Rouge company uh, production that was by Diagolef and um, Kandinsky or Nijinsky. Kandinsky did set design for them from me. So there's a lot of, <laughs> this is where it gets confusing, confusing. There's Kandinsky, Nijinsky and lots of other people it's very hard to get all their names right um but that piece of music was created for this um company and for any of you who are big ballet mu classical music nerds when the Rite of spring was shown it was so shocking that people left the theater they were like we we are not standing for this so in a time when ballet was very much um point shoes and tutus and people wore opera gloves to go see these in beautiful beautiful productions um these guys came along and kind of shocked everyone <laughs> And some people were like, what on earth is this? And some people, for example, like Coco Chanel, were like, oh, hi guys. And she actually designed for them too, along with Picasso. So, and, oh, and here's a close up of one of their costumes, which were very chunky and very beautiful. Oh, guys, just, oh my goodness, I can't even. So I went to see this exhibit when I was at uni and it was huge. It was, it was in a way it was too big. Um, and that's coming from me because um, I felt very faint halfway through from, from pure excitement and, um, you know, emotion, but this is just some of their drawings and designs and, oh, this is just so, oh, this is so beautiful. This is my jam, big time, this is my jam. Oh, um, yeah, I just love it. I, I just, oh, it's, it's my dream to have, oh, hello, lover. Some of you may remember me um, sharing this picture on Instagram. It is just abso absolutely stunning. It's so beautiful. This is um, a costume designed by Leon Basque. Leon Basque was a costume designer for them for many, many years. Um, and his his drawings alone are just 
absolutely beautiful and it's my dream to own some of his prints obviously not the originals I am not that wealthy but I remember watching I've only seen this film once I never want to see it again I'm sorry for any of you who are fans Fifty Shades of Grey he has them in his house he has them in his house he has them in his house but yeah yeah he has those prints um I noticed them in the background that's the only thing I appreciate about those films but yeah here's some of the other drawings they're just beautiful beautiful pieces of costume um I love a Russian art as well um some of these aren't exactly 100% Russian influenced um but some of his pieces I mean this this headdress yes um but the majority of their stuff was um like Russian um traditional wear and and all that all that lovely lovely colorway and, and and stuff like that and um they have a really really amazing story as well um when they had to, they had to leave russia at some point um that's more political obviously if you want to learn more about that um you should read this book but it's just a really really beautiful um book and company and their story is just pretty amazing and there's a lot of love and romance and the story of the director and one of these amazing amazing um dancers they had a love affair which which literally makes my heart sore with happiness. Um, but there's also very sad stories um, around this company, but it's just, oh, it's 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 amazing. And for those of you who work in theater or you know that your, your company is kind of like a weird family. So with a family comes gossip and it's all in here. This is this poster again, I need this poster in my life. This, some of you who are born fans might recognize this pose. This is a picture of Nijinsky. Now Nijinsky was, this one of the most groundbreaking dancers at this point. Um, there's very little uh, film or um, other pieces of his actual dancing. They have, they've managed to put together some pictures of his fawn uh, dance and they, um, if any of you watch the Darcy Bustle documentary, they managed to put together um, his fawn dance. So slightly so you can see how he moved. And if any of you watched um, Queen's music video, I can't remember which one it was, but he actually was dressed up as the fawn and then he rolls across people's bodies. It's really funny, I love it. Yes, yeah, really. Um, but this pose um, by Nijinsky, who was in fact the Agalef's lover, they became lovers instantly when they saw each other. It was like, pachow! Um, this is a pose uh, that he came up with this position here, which uh, I'm getting goose from now, just thinking about it. I'll put a picture here, was um, the main inspiration for um, Bourne's Swan Lake. And they used this pose, so it's kind of like a hom an homage, or homage, an homage, an homage. Uh, hats off to you, mate, kind of um, pose that is continued it's just so strong and so beautiful and oh I love it it's, it's just the power of performance I'm just putting it out there so yeah in case you haven't noticed there's a lot of emotional attachment to this book and to this exhibit and to this era and movement and everything about it I just think it's really really wonderful because these artists put on stuff that they believed in and they created ballet which they thought was like amazing and revolutionary and yes people didn't accept it at first but now it's become some of the greatest scores of all time um it's become some of the greatest well-known and respected ballet companies of all time so it just shows that if you're creating something and people hate it or they hate you for it you know they're they're, be they're behind and you're the future and it's fine because they did it and they managed to make it work so yeah they're pretty incredible guys so i just absolutely love it and it's a really beautiful story so for those of you who love ballet and you want something a bit different from the old, you know, the tutus and the, the point shoes, I would highly recommend this. And on the cover, I think this is the Chanel designs. This is the Coco Chanel designs here. And for those of you who don't want to get the book and you want to learn more about Coco Chanel and her involvement with the Ballet Rouge and her uh, with the composer who did the d -d 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 Bright Spring um, music. This film I highly recommend. It is in French but it's amazing and it's subtitled and every time I hear that music it just reminds me of being at uni because I listened to that music because <laughs> we designed that um, that show for personal um, designs not for production. Um, I listened to that music all day every day for about a month and a half um, and that was around the time me and my, uh, my boyfriend we fell in love and we, we got together so when I hear that I'm like dun 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 hi 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 Mr. Lee Mr. Lee. <laughs> So that is all of my recommended um, costume and fashion books. I really hope you enjoyed all my rambling um, and that you enjoyed watching. And let me know if you already own some of these, if you want to get some. Um, it is around Christmas and I know it's a taxing time of year, but you deserve to treat yourself too. So take care of yourself, everybody. Um, and don't burn yourselves out like I've been doing. I will put all the books down below, including the films that I think um, you'll enjoy that I linked to this, um, these um, ballet movements or films that to do with costume designers thing. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.